Now that we have an understanding of how D3 works, it's time to apply that knowledge to drive an HTML table from a spreadsheet. Rather than use some boring spreadsheet denoting a corporate organizational structure, let's create a roster table for everybody's favorite lower tier football team, AFC Wimbledon. To get started, let's open the roster.js file in a text editor. There is a template there which follows a pattern that we're going to use repeatedly in our data-driven controllers. The program can be broken down into three parts. Program variables, the reload function, where the data gets loaded, and the redraw function, where the data gets bound and rendered. Finally, we call the reload function and set everything into motion at the end. Let's load this page in our web browser and confirm that it works. At this point, it's a good idea to have the developer tools showing. The main reason I do this while developing is to catch any typos early. You should have a pair of log notices in the console showing that both reload and redraw were called. With that working, it's time to start filling in the details. Let's now fill in the reload function. In place of the console function, let's read in and parse the AFCW roster tab separated value file. This is our data file and the D3 TSV function parses it into an array of ordered maps for each record. This comes in very handy as you'll see shortly. The parameter to TSV is a callback function with the resulting rows. Within the callback function let's call redraw which will bind the data to the DOM when we implement it. Reload the page and let's take a look at the JavaScript console. Now type data into the console and hit enter. Notice that we get an array of objects each object is a map array. Now let's take a look at data sub 2. If you'd like to change Will Antwi's name to William, you can change it in the provided TSV file, then type reload in the console. Undefined just means that the function didn't return anything. Don't worry about that. Now check out data sub 2 again. Compared to editing HTML tables, editing a tab separated value file is much easier to maintain and we now have a way to read in such files very easily. To implement the redraw function we apply what we learned in section 1. The first part we want to fill in is the tables header t head. Where can we get the headers from in our data? The map of any record of course and D3 lets us do that by pointing out that a record, such as data sub zero, is a map from which we can get just the keys. So let's select our virtual TH elements, assign the first record's keys as their data, then in enter, append the TH tags with the appropriate text. Save that and reload the page. Hey, we have the headers driven from our data. For the body of the table, we select the virtual TR elements, assigning the entire data array as the data. Enter will then append TR elements as many times as we have records in the data. We would also like to handle the removal of rows in the table's body. Each TR row then has its TD cell elements selected and appended on Enter. The standard text setting function is then applied to all cells. Save that and reload the page. And we have replicated our table in HTML. Nice job! But we would like to remove those first two columns. How can we do that? Well, we can apply the standard JavaScript slice function to the data arrays for each row, both the keys and values. Reloading the page, we've eliminated the first two columns with the greatest of ease. But there is still one thing that's a bit bothersome about this table. The position abbreviations. I would really rather have the full name positions there. So let's add a hash map for the positions where we declare our global variables. Then for every record, change the hash map value of d.pos to be the position's map value of d.pos. Save that and reload the page. And there is our HTML table.
driven from the spreadsheet we had read in, with just a couple of tweaks to slice off a couple of columns and transform position names. So far in this section, we've learned how to read in spreadsheet data and bind a portion of that data to an HTML table structure in the DOM. We have also learned how to transform data for each record. Now we'd like to use dynamic filters to change the table contents from within a page.